The story you're about to hear is a story about transformation. It's about spiritual awakening and self-activation. It's about becoming aware of the mental prisons we keep ourselves in. It's a story about the power of medicinal plant medicine and a look into the life of a man who found a clearer purpose and a path to enlightenment with the help of these medicinal plants. Reverend Gabriel Castillo is the founder of Finally Detached. So the mushrooms are the gateway for us to accept ourselves, to see who we are fully. And as we can do that, the mushrooms make whatever we wish to create very easy. And the reason why is because there's something deeper at play. Our healing, our healing of our egoic drives, that's just the beginning. That's why the masses are starting to feel it. It's starting to become a thing, right? Especially therapeutically. They're starting to realize, wow, there's healing benefits to this. The therapeutic and healing benefits of psychedelic mushrooms are becoming widely known. The Center for Brain Health at Florida Atlantic University says the data is strong. From depression to PTSD to cluster headaches, psilocybin is showing promise in combating these conditions. At Finally Detached, Reverend Gabriel uses these medicinal plants to great success in helping journeyers connect with a deeper sense of self. After the first ceremony, I was, uh, was doing really well. And, uh... <sighs> Following Chris's first ceremony, he was on a better, clearer path. But like many of us may have experienced personally, Chris found that what was once a clear road ahead was again becoming fogged and uncertain. Chris came back and told Reverend Gabriel that he was beginning to have suicidal thoughts. That's when Chris knew what he needed again was to continue on the path the mushroom was helping set for him. I want to reconnect the mushroom like the first ceremony, where they kind of were uh, showing me, right? And then uh, not, not pushing me in there, but just showing me these are the things. I don't know if I wasn't in the right headspace, if I wasn't, I don't know, but um, this time I need to, I need to go through those doors. People aren't here to get high. They're not here looking to get a fix or to run away from anything or to dole anything. They're coming here to face it. So it takes courage, it takes courage. And a lot of people are scared to face what they know that they are because there's a lot of darkness there. Once you accept that, you become full. And the duality of life, this good and bad, becomes experience. And then you can just accept and move and then your energy's free. There's nothing holding you down. In this process, we're helping them detach from themselves, all their dogmas, everything they thought they knew, right? So if they come as an empty slate um, with low expectations in terms of not expecting anything out of it and just laying a nice foundation and just going into it saying, show me what I need to see. Let me feel what I need to feel. They're going to get through some work. I've approached it first to work with just everyone who came, right? But I realized that some just want to experience a psychedelic experience and others really are at the end and they're searching for something deeper. The ones that feel that there may be, that all of this is some sort of a, an illusion, it's the ones that can't find meaning or purpose in in the meaning that others live for. It's the rejects, it's the weirdos, it's the outcasts, it's the ones that feel abandoned and alone even though they have many people around them. And how do you get to that point of being able to control your mind? How do you reprogram your mind, right? Because you know something's wrong. You know what you've been taught may be not the best for you to get ahead. So how do you erase what has been there? And how do you lay new foundations, right? That's, that's what this work really does. And for those who can listen and then move past that and to get through themselves, there's much, much more there. I don't want to keep revisiting it every week. 
spilling my guts of all the problems that I'm having. I want to move on with my life. <clears throat> I'm ready. Typically um, on the check-in, after we're done the journey, find that individuals feel much better. They feel good. They found what they needed to find. A lot of them have, it, it was so simple because what they were looking for was themselves. They were looking for something and little did they know that that's something and whatever they were looking for, right? Trauma from relieving from an ex-wife's passing, right? Or from the passing of a husband or to get off the of Adderall or to whatever it is, they find that the answer to that lies within them because there was a trauma or some type of trigger or something in the past that led to that, right? That keeps them so attached to it. So it's really being able to, the medicine helps them to step outside of themselves, right? So they can literally see what they've been through without being in it. So when they can just see it and let it play and not be emotionally attached to it, they're able to process it. And once they're able to process it, it it just leaves. It's them. They've lived it, so they transcended it. They realize they are it. It's not something that we're healing and getting rid of or running away from. It, it's just they they accept who they are. <laughs> what was the journey for you, reflecting on it? It wasn't rough. It, w it I mean, it was rough, but it wasn't rough. It wasn't like my last journey where um, I just felt like I was on a merry-go-round that I couldn't get off. This one, this journey didn't feel like that. So when approaching the journey, set setting skills are very important. Um, so set, what's your mindset going into it, right? What I have set up for the journey is an outside ceremony location, um, candles around. I like to give the journey the option and to help them feel that they're outside yet protected inside as well. I just have to be there to help make sure he's safe in the process. Yeah, I really enjoyed this location because the water, the feeling of the water, the, the nature that's on it, beautiful trees. I know he had a longing for trees. He's gonna have to make the choice and to walk forward into his healing and doing that whatever's necessary for him to do that. And he showed up, so he's on that path. But sometimes this is the easy part just showing up. The hard part is, okay, what are you doing tomorrow morning, right? I was gonna say, if I can get past this, but I will get past this. When I get past this, I'm still processing it. And even when I leave here today, I, I don't know that I'll be fully like, you know, I gotta process that. But no, nah, man, you can, you can if you can close it this much, there's no reason that you can't completely slam it and walk away. And that's it. There's no reason I can't do that. Just have to find my way to that. And I feel like I'm, I'm on the journey. It's not an overnight thing. It's difficult. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But I feel like if I continue on with this, if I continue to work work with someone like myself. It doesn't have to be me, but 
when you approach this medicine work, you want to do it right. And the fear of a bad trip, that's a reality that's real. Um, because bad trips do happen. It's just how skilled is your facilitator at helping you navigate a bad trip into the best trip that you've ever had. If you or someone you know is experiencing suicidal thoughts or a crisis, please reach out immediately to the Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988. Their website is 988lifeline.org. Their services are free and confidential.